We're going to get started up with Ghidra, which is a decompiler, which is basically a tool that's going to allow us to be able to turn assembly-based code into an approximation of source code that would be close to equivalent. And it's basically going to give us a nice side-by-side -side showing us both the assembly and the approximate source code, which is going to make our job of disassembling binaries much easier. So we saw with OBJ dump that we could get to the actual assembly itself, but this is going to let us have both the assembly as well as something close to the source code, which makes it easier to understand the functionality and be able to go back and forth between them. It's something like Ghidra is very easy and straightforward. Generally, what you need to do is you need to install Java. In my case, OpenJDK 17 is the version that I need. And then what you'll have to do is you'll have to go on to GitHub and you're going to go to the Ghidra GitHub. It's under the National Security Agency or NSA. These are the people who actually developed Ghidra. There'll be an installation guide here. So if you're following along with a different operating system or if there's a new version out, this will give you the latest and greatest steps to installing this particular program. Generally, all you really need to do is download this zip file here. I've already got it downloaded on my computer. Once you have that downloaded and once you have Java installed, you're just going to do dot slash Ghidra run. So you're just going to run that Ghidra file and it's going to launch up Ghidra like this. So I'm going to show you like the really, really basic getting up and running with Ghidra. And we're going to continue to see all the different great things that Ghidra can do for us as we continue on through these tutorials. I will note here just before continuing on that there are other decompiling based tools that are available and disassembly based tools. And I'm going to try to show as many different tools as possible as we're going through this. Ghidra is one that I particularly like because it just, it works really well. It's got a really nice clean interface. It's very easy to use and it's free and open source. So there's a lot of nice benefits to it. That's why I like to start off with this one. I think it's a really good one to look at. So what we need to do is we need to create a new project. We just go file, new project, and it's going to give us some different prompts to talk us through, you know, setting up our project. We're going to say a non-shared project since it's just going to be, you know, you working on it. If you're sharing the project with others, you can set up a shared project, but we'll use non-shared. You need to place it somewhere on your computer. Any directory is fine, and you can give it any sort of name. I'm just going to call mine start. So that's the name of the binary that we're decompiling. Now, what's going to happen is you're going to get all of these different buttons associated. Now, you'll notice that mine has like a little bit of like weird skewing here in the images. That's just because I made the font size bigger for the video. So you probably won't encounter any problems like this. Yours will probably look a little bit more clean than this. But generally, there's a few different tools that are associated here. We have the code browser, a debugger, and a version tracker. The one that we're looking for is the code browser, which will let us actually look at the code for the actual uh, binary itself. So I'm going to click on this and it's going to launch up the code browser for us. It might take just like a second here. And here is our code browser. So I'm going to walk you through the very basics of being able to get something loaded in here and how to start looking at it. I have this start binary that we created in the last video. It's based on this, this C source code, which just returns zero, the nice simple code. So we're going to drag this in and let's see what happens. The first thing that's going to happen is it's going to ask us to specify the format and language associated with this binary. You'll see that it actually automatically picks up the format and language. So it's usually pretty reliable. If you need to change any of these, you can click on the drop down or you can click on these little dot menus here and you'll be able to change it up. So for instance, if you have a different compiler like Clang or the Visual Studio compiler, you can select these different compilers to be able to use them. This one has identified correctly that this is a GCC binary and it is using the ELF format for it. So this is all good to go. We'll select OK. And after a second of loading, it's going to give us our assembly code. And it's going to say start has not been analyzed yet. Would you like to analyze it? I'm going to say yes. There's a whole bunch of different analysis tools that are available for us. I'm not going to talk too much about these tools right now. We will get into the ideas of each of them. Each of them do have a nice description associated with them that tells you exactly what they do. But we'll talk through these in more detail as we continue on working with Ghidra. For now, we can leave everything as default and just select Analyze. And that will give us this lovely assembly code here. So this assembly code is actually very similar to the assembly code that we saw from OBJ Dump. There's probably some small differences between it. Maybe it looks a little bit more busy than the previous one. But for the most part, it's basically the same sort of outputs. Uh, there's some more data available here. And we'll see how these are useful for us as we continue on. But the main things here is that you can see all of the different sort of sections of the assembly code here. 
So if you're familiar with some of these different sections, like you know the data sections and the BSS sections, you can get to these sections pretty easily through the program tree. Much uh, simpler for us is actually getting into specific functions going into this uh, symbol tree here. So in this symbol tree, you'll see that there's this function main. If I click on this, it will take me straight to the main function. And what you'll see here is on the left-hand side of the main function, so let me go back to that, there we go. On the left-hand side of the main function here, you'll see that we have the assembly code associated with this main. So this here gives us a function, right? This is main, the main function. And you'll see that a lot of this is basically the same as what we saw in the last video, right? We have the push of RBP and the move for RBP and RSP. This was the setup of the function. This was setting up the exit status code, and this was setting up the return from the actual function itself. Now notice when I highlight these, it highlights the source code as well. And you can see that it actually gave us a very good approximation of the code that we wrote to get this binary, right? The only real thing that changed here is this undefined eight, which is just that it doesn't really have too much context towards what the return type of this function is, because all it really knows is that it returns zero. So it's not really able to infer from that that this is necessarily an int. It just uh, says that it's an undefined eight. It's some sort of numeric value is what we're able to sort of get out of this. But you can see that it, it sort of misses a few points just because it can't really infer it just based on this information here. So there's a little bit missing, but all in all, it's a very very good approximation of the C code itself. So this is of course very useful, right? Because now we can actually see the code that's associated with this main function. And we see it very similar to the code that was actually written to get us this function. So from now on, as we're going through the videos in this series, we're gonna be working with primarily Ghidra because it gives us this representation here. It's gonna make it very easy for us to go back and forth between the two to understand you know, what's associated with which line of code and what sort of C code corresponds with what assembly code. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.